Hi, this is Jussi. And I'm Ville. I'm Henka, and we are Moonshot. Okay, so hello everyone. Chaos TV is today here at Helsinki, Finland. And we have here Jussi, Ville and Henka from the new band Moonshot as guests. So first of all, hello guys and welcome to Chaos TV. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Nice thank to be you, here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so in general, how has the year started for you guys? Yeah, pretty nicely. Uh, we just made the launch for Moonshot. 20, uh, 22nd of uh, January and uh, things went quite smoothly and and so uh, it's good position to continue from here. So the launch went quite well and you already have like what like over 4,000 4, fans in Facebook without actually releasing any music. <laughs> so how nervous were you guys in the beginning? How will the fans take this? We were actually super, super nervous and we are still <laughs> because it's like, you know, we have been like hiding in, hiding in the bushes so, so long. So, so it's like you never know what happens when you, you know, stand up and, and you know, tell about what, what is going on. But, you know, people have, they have been quite interested and, you know, everything has been like super, super cool and smooth until <laughs> Till today, yeah. I don't know what happens now. Yeah, of course, it's al <laughs> always, always exciting to show people something that you put your sweat and tears into, so to speak. So uh, it's a big deal. So sure. I, I read that you actually started the band like in 2017, or you had the idea of, of forming a band together with Mikko, your drummer. So where did the spark actually came from? Yeah, that was yeah back in December 2017. Uh, Disco Ensemble played their last show in, in Turku, Finland, and and after the show we were just sitting in the lobby of a hotel, hotel and uh, just came to talks about what should we do with with music after this and uh, the idea of a new fresh rock band came into talks and we got pretty excited and uh, and it wasn't it wasn't that long after that uh, when I started to work on the first demos and uh, and in that few months I guess I, I made like maybe 10 10 songs and uh, and then it was around was it September yeah, 2018, yeah, just, yeah. <coughs> I yeah. called Ville and uh, asked him to if he would be interested in joining this new new group, and he was pretty excited. And uh, and maybe two weeks after that, we were already recording vocals for the first songs, and yeah. things escalated quite quickly. Okay, yeah, so like you already had quite a lot of like material then when you yeah. approached Ville yeah. that would you be up mm. for it? Yeah, yeah, it was, you know, when Yusi called and, and uh, told about this this thing, I, I was like, okay, let me think. Ah, oh, yes, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like two seconds. And it's like, then you sent me this Dropbox, Dropbox link and, and I started to listen to those demos immediately. And, and then it's like, then it just happened that, okay, okay, it's... I just like realized that okay, I'm I'm already, you know, jumped in the process, you know, before I even realized that I'm doing it because it is so, you know, the material to start like suck suck you in and, yeah. and you know, the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, and I I must say it was really exciting to hear that you know, it was like maybe three days after I sent the demos to Ville, he sent maybe like five rough mm. rough mm. vocals for five different songs and it was a really exciting moment for me to hear you know to have those my my like the raw demos come to life and and turn into songs you know and mm. it was a big moment and it was also like kind of you know terry picking thing for me because i had those you know massive amount of demos and i kind of pick up you know the ones I like the most, and start to do those lyrics and melodics over them. So it was like totally kind of new opportunity, opportunity that I haven't haven't been before. You know, never. 
you know, it's like, okay, now I'm having this like huge package of material I can, you know, work on. And, and it, you know, it, it felt really good and, and inspired me, you know, really much. So did you had some kind of like vocal ideas already in your mind when you were composing the songs or was it the part when Villa joined that you kind of wanted to have him mm -hmm. the free hand yeah. to do whatever yeah. he wanted with the vocals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't really have any 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 guidelines to as per vocals. I, I I've always thought that it's really important for whoever makes the lyrics and, and sings them he should also like have the initial spark for the melodies and and phrases and whatever top lines you choose to use so uh so uh, that was Willis field and i think it's important to have it like that mm. you know and and uh, up to this point we have uh, the process has been like that i'm having this like one hook or one line or something and other parts could be like something like mumbo jumbo thing and it's like then I just like introduced that kind of thing to guys and that they, they were like okay this you know the song would be you know this subject under this this subject but I don't have anything else that like two lines but anyways it's there already like this like a seed of, yeah. the, of the subject and then then we start to have this like a dialogue and you know Mm -hmm. Put it back and forth. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, so the big, big ideas and the big hooks, sort of like, mostly came from Villa, and, mm. and we just, you know, like adjust, adjusted it. them a yeah. bit and yeah. to find the and I like best the balance, you know. Yeah, I like, I like, I like, I like it when it's. I don't want to, you know, do that way. That okay, I've done my part and that's it. I, I believe the dialogue that I'm, I'm giving something and then it's coming back and then it's like. That you you have to challenge yourself, yeah. and, and stuff mm. like that, because all of us we're having this, you know, massive kind of uh, background what we have done and 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 that kind of thing. Why why not use it, you know, yeah. when it comes to like perspective? Yeah, and, and the all. yeah, and the great thing was that the whole song making process was like this one big dialogue between all of us, mm. and, and 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 when we produced the vocals in in my 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 studio. Uh, all, all four of us were present, and and everybody like had their it had had changed. their yeah. points, and the mm. synergy was really good. Okay. So basically, there were like a documents of the process what we have done after you have done those demos. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you actually ended up having Henka as the bass player. So how did he came into the picture? Mm. Yeah, that was. Um, that's, uh, a good Bill, story. Yeah, yeah, that's a good story. Yeah, that's a good story. I guess uh, Ville, Ville knows it better since he, he was the one. He was the, there's this one, one technician which is a link between Henka and Ville, yeah. Ville yeah. and, and Moonshot. And of course, we know, all know well this, we know this technician really well and he's a dear friend. So uh, It was one summer festival last summer. I was at the backstage after the show and... and and then the, this technician just just came in and we had, had a chat and, and then I talked that, okay, I'm doing something with those guys and something that, you know, something is really happening, that, but we're still missing a bassist. And then, then this, this guy told me that, mm, I may have some kind of idea, <laughs> maybe. And, and then, then it just happened that, you know, in a one week we were sitting in Jussi's, Jussi's studio with Henk and, you know. Yeah, my, my point of view is that when it was very late spring last last year, 2019, this one technician, he's been working for us for a long time, so of course he knew everything about mm. what's happening in, in Bodom. And then then when the decision was done, then we had some, one of the first festivals of the summer we played, and after the festival, after the, the show, when he was packing the stuff and I went backstage, he was like, Henka, I need to talk about something after the show. I'm like, okay, yeah, it's this one new band thing. I'm like, okay, I'm like, okay, wow, because I just made the decision like, you know, two weeks before. Okay. And then, uh, then after the show, everything was done. Then he met me at the hotel bar and said that, yeah, there's this new new thing that that Villa and and you and Mikko are doing, and they're they're missing a bass player. And can I can I tell Villa to call you next week? I'm like, yeah, I can always talk. <laughs> <laughs> 
and then then we talked on the phone and then uh, then i got some some uh, i got the, the the dropbox file for all the demos and and then i maybe thought about it for i don't know how long a lot, like three minutes maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no no but like few days few days few days because i talk, yeah. talked about it at home you know you know because of the family stuff and everything and but and there were three long days for me yeah. <laughs> for us, yeah, and then then i was convinced that yes i'm, I'm going to be in I, it's a good rare chance for me to, to start making music again so was it like a clear vision or decision like right away that you actually want to get into a new band or was it after bottom that you wanted kind of have some time off to focus on family life and then maybe have a, like a new decision when it comes to music career or well actually how how weird it m- might seem but i i always thought that i will not play music professionally ever again after bottom mm. for some reason i always thought that there there couldn't be any anything that would be inspiring enough for me to you yeah, know, yeah, to yeah. to actually do it like from day to day because it's you know it's it it needs it needs some some spark that you, you can actually mm. keep keep doing it and uh so yeah so I, I, I ne- it was really surprising that first of all that somebody would ask me to join the band join a band and then it would be this kind of music and <laughs> this kind of combination of people so all, all these all these things were just so i don't know felt it felt really really good even though it was very scary because of the style of the music is very different mm. so so um yeah but it was so surprising and it was such a good combination of all, all kind of things that 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 made me do it yeah and when i called you i, I remember it was like a, you were really like surprised and how the hell you call me yeah the finland yeah. is full of bass players yeah, yeah, yeah but no. yeah but we, we want you <laughs> oh, please but obviously now if you have also like written down that like former members of disco ensemble and lapko and mm-hmm. children of bottom so obviously you have like quite big names behind you and obviously the term like super group came mm-hmm. into picture almost straight away mm. so what do you think about the whole term and and are you like nervous how will the fans of like three different bands take the new band yeah it's i must say it's a pretty dangerous term <laughs> every, yeah it every, is every, every time so uh yeah it's it, i am a bit nervous about the whole whole thing and how how people see it and and especially when when if if media decides to use that term up front before any music is out and and so on so it's a it's an interesting situation but you know uh well and uh, uh, yeah uh, yeah and it's 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 you know when we s- before we start to play like in rehearsals play, plays like really play i, I thought that you could uh, This, like like I thought about like three minutes about those those our former bands and those big names and okay this could be something like somebody could call like super group whatever yeah. but when we started to play because you know playing it's quite simple it's like you you can't you know think about too much you know yeah. it doesn't matter you know those kind of you know backgrounds and histories they don't count you just play and it's like you are like in a present moment that's that's it So so it's like you know I think you can call it however you want you know you want but still it's like it's like noise that we we four people are doing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you know yeah. you have described the music as, as like 21st century rock so could you open that a bit did you had like a clear vision what you wanted to accomplish with the songs that you wrote well i guess my my vision always is a combination of uh, you know the like the lump of demos and whatever inspires me when i do them and when i just might have like 10 demos and and those demos just you know uh represent whatever they might you know and uh but um i guess it came pretty naturally to to do like uh the sort of sound that made us listen to rock music in the first place which is like like 
I guess, alternative rock and maybe some punk and hardcore stuff from the like late 90s and uh, early 2000. You know, all those bands which were big back in that day and we were like in our late teens or something like that. And that sort of music usually, when whatever you listen in that age, like, you know, from 15 to 20 years old, that sort of music usually follows you through your whole life. Yeah. And, and I just ended up finding that music again, you know, inside me. And uh, that's what I just decided to follow. Okay. Mm. So sp- speaking about like mu- music, how much music do you actually have ready at the moment? Or are you just like in the phase of recording music or what kind of like plans do you actually have when it comes to putting out the first single for people to hear? We have we have had a one one session in a studio already, and we are we're having like uh, I would say fifty percent of of this debut album done. You know, it's still in a mixing process, but but still, and we are supposed to have this another one, another session. This you know during the spring, and when it comes to singles, we haven't <laughs> <laughs> we haven't made any decisions, and we we couldn't because you know there's those those you know, label stuff and managers are working and stuff like that. So, so we don't have any schedules yet, but, uh, you know, we're working hard to get this whole thing done and <laughs> get, you know, get the, this whole thing wrapped up. Yeah, I was actually a bit surprised that you didn't release the first single while you announced the band. Yeah, we yeah. Uh, we, we talked about that quite, quite a lot, you know, the, the whole sonic big bang but you know but in a way yeah. it's it's also nice that now there's a bit sort of like a mystery curtain mm. Mm. within the band that nobody actually knows how will it will sound yeah yeah i must say that we are really you know sort of counting the days to put the music out but but on the other hand we just we need to we need to uh make sure that everything is in place before we put anything out so yeah. if, if we do that too early it's it, it might just you know screw up stuff so uh, mm-hmm. yeah the so. first impression is quite important nowadays when it comes to music because everything mm-hmm. is online so it's better to have the good impact <laughs> at yeah. once than yeah. just yeah. don't have it and then just try to build it like afterwards that doesn't normally work like that yeah, yeah. and yeah. and of course it's like it has to be like the best version of what we can do so so we really have to put you know all of our power to make it you know as as best version as we are so so it's like you know it doesn't make sense to put it like put it out before it's like perfect a little bit better than perfect you know so it's like yeah you can't change it afterwards so it would be would be Interesting to say that. Actually, we have a better version of this. So wait, wait two months. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, you know, forget, yeah. for, forget what you heard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. just erase yeah. that. Yeah. This one is better. This, this is the yeah. same song, but a little bit better. So yeah, <laughs> and it's like you know, it's 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 for because you know we are having this. You know, we are. You know, there's there's lots of. I assume there's lots of people who are really waiting what we are doing. So yeah. it's 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 it has to be like word of this waiting, and you know, yeah. we don't wanna we don't wanna you know do it like yeah. properly. So in the end, before we wrap things up, a bit about like touring plans when it comes to future. Do you already have like some dates? Will you be playing in some festivals in the summer, or is, is that like too early when it comes to like the new music, or what kind of plans do you have? Yeah, there's some speculation, but but since we haven't locked the dates for the you know the first songs to be put out, so we need to synchronize you know, the li- live stuff around the actual releases as well. So uh, it's too early to say. Yeah. yeah. So first first we have to get the setup for the release clear. And yeah. then, then we can mm. start mm. doing other stuff. So so now we just have to wait until everything is clear when it comes to the release. And then, then hopefully th- things start to roll. Mm. So hey guys, thank you a lot for the thank time and, and all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Anything you want to say to people who are actually waiting for you to put out some music? 
Just hang on there. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on waiting. We are doing our best. It will, the music will come. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.